Not again. Stop asking me. Fine. Remco. Even a pool goes crazy on a Rampas Inhumanas goat track in La Vuelta before the first rest day. A Uso unreal performance. Stage 9 finishing on Les Prairies. Super steep climb. 3.8 kilometers long at 13.3% average. So obviously the steeper pinches in that. It turns it's not even a road at the end. And the stage is kind of difficult beforehand. It's not just a flat hockey stick stage. There's four decent climbs beforehand. Super technical descent in the run into this climb as well. Uh, temperatures a little bit warmer than previous days. I'd say quite warm, 28 degrees throughout the stage. And a pretty comfortable break for Quick Step went up the road with the Hent, but riders weren't happy or other teams weren't happy with that. Jay Vines trying to get in that breakaway or get in the break. Uh, but Quick Step weren't happy with him getting the break sending julian alaphilippe to mark him and so they just obviously didn't want someone on five minutes or whatever he's on on gc getting into the breakaway although i kind of think quick step or remco were half interested in the stage as well so they didn't really care who was in the break but they did at the start they were monitoring things and it was a difficult start to control for them they lost seri due to covid in the morning uh carapaz tried to get in the breakaway aaronsman's there the tall dutchman for dsm he's on three and a half minutes in this breakaway but and then vine goes again on the first category climb of the day with Soler and Butrago, but quick step again pacing super hard to stop him getting in the break and all this action has caught out Joel Almeida who's on the radio perhaps to the team saying guys can you someone drop back or just let them know he's there then Aaronsman drops out of the break of his own accord which was curious perhaps they told him to sort of get lost because he was making quick step chase too hard I don't know what happened cool down quick step take control Fast forward to 20 cases to go. Nothing too much has happened. Brakes been working. Gap is pegged at four minutes. You see this flat undulating terrain. There's Louis Menkes in the breakaway. Clear favorite to win the stage. If you watched on Haimonoteru last year, him and Jan Hurt, steep gradients, welter. He's superior to the guys in this group. So they're going to try and work him over in that valley. Alpers have two riders, Stannard and Jimmy Janssens. And you see here Menkes like in the Tour de France when he tried to bridge across, can't remember which stage, like he suffers a lot. He's under 60 kilos on the flatter, faster section. So that's where they're trying to work him over. And then Menke's actually, in the run, and he attacks them, flip the script. How about I attack you before the climb? And it's a 15-minute climb, so they didn't need as big a gap as Vine maybe needed on the climb yesterday. And then Janssen's and Battistella counter. Stanard's in the group behind. He can sit in run into the finish position is extremely important you see this road surface it's got like that belgian seam in the road alaphilippe absolutely unreal performance today he's come good keeping having a pole in good position mass third wheel actually and here's this tricky descent i played in full with the two guys leading battistella and youngsters in the break got a left hand sweeper straight into a sharp right hander that doubles back on itself bit of a blind corner because the hedge is then straight into a left hander so it's okay when you're leading, maybe you can do your own pace, like Battistella is here, doesn't seem to be under in too much trouble, thankfully it was dry, but in the peloton, someone breaks a little bit too much ahead of you, trouble, and here's Gagan Hart, this is before that section, uh, crashing with Chris Harper, we didn't actually see from the helicopter what actually happened, I don't think, and that's going to cost Gagan Hart a lot of time on GC, who has had really good legs so far in this Vuelta, and he does his best, but he's, I think, like five minutes back now. They get to the climb, Battistella and, and Janssen's. We don't really know Menke's gap until we see this shot here from the heli. He's that figure sort of blending into the background, and at this point, we already know he is going to win the stage because... I don't know what he's doing on Alpe d'Huez, but he's just a different caliber of climate. And it's 13%, and he's so light compared to these guys. I mean, Banastel's a nice rider too, but I know what gap he had before the climb. He puts a minute into them actually on the climb or afterwards, and you see how the surface changes to this sort of grid structure. Menke's winning his first World Tour race. He won Apennino this year, 30 years old. What a resurgence, close in the Tour de France. Very, very happy to see him win that stage. And now back to the GC group. Alaphilippe still punching Avonapol into the base of this climb. And position matters. You see where Roglic is. I don't know if he was caught up because he was, was with Harper or something when he crashed he's at the back of this group behind O'Connor and you see Almeida's in front of O'Connor as well Mars and Avonapol are in really really good position and that's five seconds 
And five seconds is a lot. If you have to bridge back on a 12% pinch, it's a huge watt spike you have to do. So positioning is super important going into this climb. And you see, actually, Avonapol's even got a little bit of a gap here. And Marcel, um, I think maybe Verona he had as a teammate, he's having to close that gap even before the climb. So Quickstep played it perfectly because Van Wilder and Alflute can't really help Avonapol on the climb. They can't do the watts. And straight, we didn't see it cut back from Menke's Ayuso attacked. He was behind Sivakov, I think, at the start the climb incredible confidence probably the best 19 year old climber in history Juan Ayuso attacking Avinapol at the base crazy legs today 6.5 watts per kilo for 15 minutes crazy performance maybe it cost him a little bit going so hard at the start O'Connor Hindley Almeida would lose a lot of time today as well as Sivakov the podium ambitions are pretty much done and Avinapol sees that he's got Roglic on a little bit of a gap already constantly checking his power meter perhaps went a little bit harder at the start of Prairies today because whilst he dropped Roglic on Picurano he didn't drop Enric Mas but he was able to on the steeper gradients here draft less important gets rid of Mas credit to Mas for maybe going over his limit initially there and Avonpole you see how steep it is on these gradients and here was the thing people were saying Avonpole couldn't do steep gradients but like the maths works out that if he can do x was per kilo for 15 or 20 minutes and he just does that on a steep gradient he's gonna go pretty fast and he puts a minute gap into Ayuso, Rodriguez and Enric Mas at this point but they would claw it back. I think he had a little bit left in the tank yesterday but today he went all out. Great day for Spanish cycling though with those three just behind him, two, three and four of the GC guys. Ayuso actually gapping Mas and Rodriguez at the end but it was all about Avonapol gapping all his GC rivals, making a statement before the TT on Tuesday, which should suit him almost more than everybody, the Aero Bullet. He didn't get the stage win, but 50 seconds on Roglic, nearly 40 seconds on Enric Mas in second place. Huge performance from him. Ayuso, you see, gapping them, finishing really strong there. But still, good performance from Roglic, and we this isn't over yet. We have Sierra Nevada, completely different to this sort of 15-minute pure watts per kilo test ramp below altitude. That's going to be a huge stage next Sunday, but Menkes wins the stage ahead of Battistella Zambanini, who's very good. Even a Paul Conker, Ayuso Guglielmini, Mas Rodriguez, Roglic rounding out the top 10. Even a Paul extends his lead to 112 over Mas, 153 on Roglic, 233 on Rodriguez, who and he's only three seconds ahead of Ayuso, breathing down his neck. And Yates... Very, very inconspicuous, but he's still in contention for the podium on 3.08. Here's what Menkes had to say after the stage. Yeah, actually, I've never been on the podium of a World Tour race, except for team classification. <laughs> so, yeah, that was one of my main goals before uh, stopping my career is... Uh, to get onto the podium of a World Tour race. The rest day tomorrow. Make sure you go check out the rest day recap on the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast or the Watts article associated with this stage on lanternrouge.com.au. And until stage 10, ciao.